cellist Johannes Moser started out wanting to play in an orchestra, but now he's sought out as a soloist to front orchestras all over the world. He's just won an Echo Classic Award, and Arts 21 followed him to New York. The high point of every concert with Johannes Moser is when he performs his solos. At the conservatory, the 27-year-old never even dreamed of becoming a world-class player. But winning the prestigious Tchaikovsky competition in 2002 gave him his big break as a soloist. Nevertheless, celebrity hasn't gone to his head. Many so-called prodigies have watered down what they're really about, making music to make it easy to swallow. That's exactly what I want to avoid. Art is sacrosanct. Natürlich möchte ich in den größeren Kreis erreichen. Das ist der Traum jedes Musikers. Aber es gilt noch die Maxime, die eigenen Ideale dabei nicht zu verraten. For Moser, that also means perfecting his technique. At home in Berlin, he practices for five hours every day. He's preparing for a major concert with the New York Philharmonic. These are the Rococo variations, which I'll be playing in New York. The point is to make the sound as intimate as I can, but so that each of the 2,000 people there can still hear it. It's a bit of a paradox, having to be intimate with 2,000 people. But I'm still trying to get this sound out of my instrument, and it's not really working. Das mag nicht so recht gelingen. <lacht> You've got to make people feel that the sound may be intimate, but it's still aimed at everyone. Moser began to play the cello at the age of eight. His parents are also professional musicians as well as his harshest critics. The higher up the ladder you climb, the less honest is the feedback you get. There aren't many people who tell you straight to your face how a performance came over. As his departure for New York grows closer, Moser goes to a violin maker to fine tune his cello. A violin maker can do things with the instrument that I can't. He can set it up properly, and he can also reassure me when I think it sounds lousy. It's usually just a little attack of nerves. A good violin maker also has a psychological function. A few days later, Moser is in New York and on his way to rehearsals. He's already played in the United States several times, including with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra under conductor Pierre Boulez. But it's his New York debut which is a huge challenge. Getting stopped in the street by fans is just one new experience. Moser and conductor Lauren Mazel have worked together before in Tokyo. A quick rehearsal before the concert gives everyone a chance to get warmed up. The pressure of expectations is enormous. The New York Philharmonic is one of the world's most important orchestras, and audiences in the Big Apple are notoriously hard to please. But Moser enjoys being in the spotlight. A big part of the thrill, of course, is appearing with an orchestra which has such a reputation and such a great conductor and so many people in the audience and it's sold out. It's hugely exciting. But it's also a big part of the thrill to share with so many people at long last what you've been working on all that time at home. The Avery Fisher Hall in the middle of Manhattan is the home of the New York Philharmonic. 
In the final countdown to the concert, Moser is a bit nervous. Tchaikovsky's Rococo Variations is one of the most technically demanding pieces ever written for cello. It was Moser's interpretation of it which launched his career worldwide just a few years ago. The solo sections are the absolute highlights of the piece. finale and Johannes Moser is home free. The tough New York audience is delighted with his performance and his debut in the city is a great success. But the accolades don't end there. Back in Germany, Moser is also awarded a prestigious Echo Prize as this year's best young classical instrumentalist.